Okay, a few years later, Shigorian playing black against Richard Teichman, the guy that said chess is 99% tactics. Apparently, uh, Teichman also came fifth in a lot of times in tournaments and started to be known as uh, Richard V. Anyway, as white, he played d4 and allowed Shigorian to go into his pet idea or opening, which reflects a lot of his ideas. It's like giving away the bishop pair straight away in terms of uh, uh, to get compensation, like um, d4 pressure, sometimes good knights. So in this game, c takes d5, bishop takes f3, and again, white avoids a move like g takes f3. He lets Shigorin have his bishop pair for the moment. But again, there's a persistence with e6 to want to give this bishop away now for this knight on c3. So what are the trump cards which have so fascinated Chigorin here to want to you know break the Steinitz rules of the two bishops? It's revolving again largely around d5 this game in a nutshell and also around king safety factors. Uh, so he, he doesn't just um, want to give away this bishop you know he's playing on his trump cards so bishop f4 knight f6 after e3 bishop b4. Like in the Nimzo engine really in general this this move as well as e4 control it also improves d5 control so queen b3 knight d5 the bishop moves back to g3 now black castles after bishop d3 queen g5 so the queen is already out looking to attack the white king if it goes to the king side and against this white perhaps is overly cautious he plays queen c2 delaying casting on the king side but in fact now after provoking this move f5 because he was attacking h7 so f5 blocks that but white cheekily is about to, to castle on the queen side bishop e5 rook f7 note another thing about f5 you know he's giving that that gaping hole on e5 and i don't think it's because he's aware of you know the weak square concept that is now being sort of rammed down people's throats because of Steinitz's uh, teachings in the magazines at the time, etc. So why is he given that e5 away? Because he's got his trump cards. He's happy with them, especially after castling. He's going to give away the bishop as well. Bishop takes c3. So giving white more pawns in the centre now. The bishop pair. Nice gaping hole on e5. So would you say, from a Steinitzian perspective, black has been strategically crushed? Or would you say both sides have their advantages and disadvantages and black wants to play on his advantages, his trump cards? So um, what are they, you might ask? Well, the king is on the queen side. What does Sadie and Lessing say about the position? Actually, after 15 pawn takes bishop, if I might quote Sadie and Lessing, by the criteria of the Steinitz school, white has these advantages, bishop versus knight, the whole at, at king five, more central pawns. So, But these features are static, whilst bl black's plans are dynamic. Watch the player, the agile knight. So the agile knight on d5, yeah, that is one of his major trump cards as a result of all this, this knight. And he's using it now to sort of spearhead an attack. He plays b5, and already... You know, c3 is, is is potentially under more pressure if b4. The knights can coordinate with a pawn to undermine white's king safety in general. So rook hg1 and the queen switches over again, maybe eyeing c3 after queen a3. So rook df1. If only white had more time to try and rip open the lines, then maybe you know, the you know, black king would would be a bit less safe. But at the moment, it seems as safe, safe and snug with that rook on f7 despite this bishop on e5 eyeing g7. So check, and it all happens far too quickly now, the counterplay, all supported by this strong knight on d5. b4, uh, you know, white's actually getting blown to bits now, losing tempos to attacks like bishop a4 now. So the queen has to move back. Now knight c3, again hitting the queen. Now rook d8, all this dynamic, lively stuff. King in the center, that's going to play c5. So could you could you simply argue, well, you know, Shigorin's just putting a lot more priority on, on things like king safety and, and nice knights. 
I mean, you could you could argue that that the king is is after all an important thing, but you know that's that's what really um, you know Steinitz was was trying to shy people away from you know getting getting um, positional advantages first before going on to the attack, but this is slightly different. Shigorin wasn't blatantly going for the traditional advantages for positionally crushing his opponents. He was deliberately creating his own positional trump cards like the strong knight. And so you could say that the knight was the essential precursor for again a successful attack against the white king here. So the white king is starting to be slaughtered. So knight e4 check, king e2, knight c5 and tactics start to play here. So d takes and the queen's hitting d3. So white protected the d3 bishop. Teichmann simply took after takes he took on a2 check and now this is getting really really unpleasant um, especially after white's next move which is king f3 black simply plays bishop c2 and where is the queen going um, this is tricky uh, if the queen goes to d2 then bishop e4 check uh, and if, then if king e2 I think bishop f3 um, so here actually white resigned let's let's stick on Ribka I, I don't really like sticking on Ribka too much so hence uh, let's just check this position but it does does seem quite uh, quite crushing so so queen d2 check here there's bishop f3 yes and now if king e1 there's queen a1 and that's that's totally the end of it uh, for the white king if um, King d3, others oh, check here, queen b3. So queen will have to go in front of the pawn, to, you know, you can just take it. So what a nightmare position. And was the king actually forced to go to f3? What if queen d2 here? Well, then there's queen takes c4 check. Now, and if bishop f3, either queen d5, that's the strongest, or bishop c2. So check. If the king moves. Oh, queen takes e5 check. Look at that. So um, White's king, you know, just totally mauled. Um, so maybe you know, you you could argue that part part of the Steinitz theory, at least of accumulating an advantage before going on to the attack, was adopted by Shigorin. But um, he was choosing which elements he was playing on, in particular the strong knight on d5. So that was his flag for a successful attack being possible. He he just playing on his trump cards, and. Um, I think that, that also Steinitz may have been creating a kind of Achilles heel in players. If he's dishing out a, gen a generation of players which are just going to blindly believe in you know the power of the two bishops or more pawns in the centre, then that can be exploited by those that will play double-edged openings to give those apparent advantages to the opponents, as long as they have other advantages which can also be successfully used as, as a basis for an attack. So here this knight on d5 is clear evidence in this game that um, the ideology is, is of Steinitz uh, cannot, be, cannot, cannot be putting chess as a routine sort of game. That's, it's just about certain elements and not others. A lot of dynamic factors are coming into play here. Now, not only the knight, the king's safety issue, this b5 energetic um, line opening and the queen and knight co coordination is very fast along with b4. So white's pretty position is just totally wrecked here. And with, with these tempo gaining moves as well, it doesn't really help. And uh, the king's stuck in the center, so uh, c5 is also going to be dangerous. But uh, knight, knight e4 check here. By the way, if bishop, bishop takes e4, then, then white's not going to get his open g file. And not only that, f takes, there's now things like queen d3. Potentially, um, I think this is going to be slaughter for White because C five is also coming soon. Um, so this is just really unpleasant. So that's maybe why the, the king went to E two, but then Knight C five, and it just carries on this this light square attack in particular. Even though it's opposite color bishops, this this often favors um, the attacking side when when there's a king sort of vulnerable. So ch check would would be nice. The um, 
deflecting the queen. But in the game, it was it was after bishop c2 that um, that white resigned. So, so you can play on your trump cards to guarantee a successful attack. I think we're reaching that conclusion. Please let me know if you if you disagree with that conclusion. If you think that um, actually the Steinitz elements are the only ones. Uh, if you're if you're radical enough to, to say that, please say it. You know, but I think I think Shkorin's definitely demonstrating that there's other dynamic elements, and these dynamic elements can also be used as a successful precursor to a dangerous and winning king attack. Thanks very much.